Um, so yes, like you said, I am a Population Health Project Manager within NHS Lothian Public Health. So we are part of the Partnership in Place teams within East Lothian. So there's only three of us, myself, a colleague Laura and our manager Kat. So we cover all of East Lothian and we're looking at the root causes of health inequalities. Um, so I put this lovely little quote in because um, this kind of stands by the, the restructure in public health. So a couple of years ago, public health decided that we're going to sway away from um, the physicality side of things of saying, do this exercise, eat this don't take drugs, don't do this, don't do that, um, and away from choices and actually recognising that our choices are predominantly led by the environments around us um, and kind of the root cause big um, hitter for health inequalities, uh, life expectancy is huge, um, hugely disproportionate in certain areas of the story. So like I said, it was a big reshuffle, and that is because of this little guy, Lorraine will be so annoyed because I'm constantly showing this little guy everywhere I go. Um, so this is basically what shapes our health. So that those first two are the environment around us, that social, that physical, that political, that economic environment around us. So all about our green spaces, our income, our employment, our housing, our education, as well as like our social networks and um, our accessibility of active travel and little things like that. So, and then below that, we've got our health behaviours, which are actually really predominantly shaped by our access to all of the above. So, our access income and our employment and our whether we've, we have a physical or mental disability, a lot of different things. Um, so, as much as that's 30%, I would say it's kind of 80% for the top. Um, so, trying to link that into some of the intergenerational work that you are doing, um, you can see that my little man changes a bit. Uh, so, the physical environment is uh, required for all generations, and actually that is the one um, thing that we can all have in common, um, and it's important to actually make those accessible for all generations, all ages, and because it's the environments around us that, that are really shaping our health. Um, Poverty is a life course um, issue and we see kind of intergenerational poverty. So that kind of coming through the ages and certainly when I was looking up a lot of health inequalities within intergenerational, um, well, intergenerational inequalities, poverty was coming up massively because it is passed through generation to generation to generation. And actually, what can we learn from those that are of a different generation, what can we learn from them that they've been through? Because poverty is hitting different these days. Um, everybody was in a very similar situation way back when, and it's not quite the case now. Like I said, it's that inequalities gap rather than um, this kind of deprivation scale. Um, so we also look at stigma. Um, I popped that within the kind of trauma discrimination inequality, inequality bit. So with intergenerational working, that is hugely, um, it hugely impacts stigma. Um, so it's reducing stigma and that kind of public perception of youths, of old people, and it's actually bringing everybody together. Um, and that kind of falls into the social networks as well. Everything that we do nowadays is very, very siloed and it's very, well, this is for your age group, and this is for your age group, and it actually, that really limits our social networks and who we can actually depend on. And it can quite often create this kind of public perception of, oh, they're older, they're going to be scared of me, or they're younger, they're not going to be able to help me. So um, that intergenerational work is, is massive and actually breaking down those barriers. Um, and just at the bottom there, I have that on every slide, is those health behaviours being very, very um, impacted by, by all the above. Um, so, intergenerational, intergenerational inequalities, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, so, we have, this a lot of information on this slide, I'm so sorry, um, but we've got a big change in society. So, um, it's changing massively and there's more increased intergenerational segregation. And what I mean by that is, like I said, this is for your age group and this is for your age group and you do this because you're young or you do this because you're old and actually there's very little... Um, 
there, there's obviously pockets of where this is going really well, but it's not really across the board. And that kind of, that's leading to this massive increase in social isolation, and um, particularly for the elderly, and we're seeing kind of that in the young as well. And actually, how can we bring all that together? Um, the, the kind of research into intergenerational work is very, very scarce. There's not a lot of information on it. Studies that have done it, or if there are little pockets that are doing intergenerational work, they have really positive results, and it is really um, quite mind-blowing how beneficial it can be. There's just not the evidence to back it up, so there's not much of it going about. So we can really improve on that. And lastly, there we've got an aging population. East Lothian's um, going to be massive soon, um, and like the rest of the UK, we are going to be living longer. We're going to have a much older population in the area. Um, but like I said, health inequalities are largely based around, well, one of the big bases we, we have on that is life expectancy. So we look at that as a, as a good scale of what people are, how long are people living and what the healthy life, life expectancy is. So your healthy life expectancy is the number of years without um, disease. And we see that as a massive inequalities gap between those of and higher deprivations and, and, low, and lower deprivation areas. So actually that kind of creates greater health needs. We are seeing a much greater kind of care for those that are slightly younger in um, areas of higher deprivation and for, for obviously the older and the wealthier side of it. So what can we actually do? So intergenerational practice is amazing at kind of promoting this and actually looking at all the health benefits of it and the research that we already know actually brings together people. So that kind of breaking stigma, breaking down the public perception of age, that kind of discrimination, as well as all the health benefits of it as well. We see um, there's a lot of studies going out that are looking at um, the brain and how actually it can slow the the kind of the the breakdown of the brain when it comes to dementia and Alzheimer's, etc. So that is a really beneficial thing, and more research needs to go into that. And um, policies, so integrated impact assessments are used. I don't know how much is known about them, but they're they're used as a tool to look at um, kind of the impact of a strategy or policy or a service on vulnerable groups. Now, elderly are in that the kind of the the young aren't in that it's not really based on age group it's based on vulnerability but actually i think they could be used much better and actually looking at how we how that's going to imp impact different um kind of generations so for example covid a lot of the the kind of policies and initiatives that were there the the most starkly affected were the two generations that were the furthest apart so it was the elderly and the young ones that were mostly affected and how actually could we have done that better and brought them together and um, that was that's one of the big considerations for them um, and like I said evidence everything that I do in my job just now is evidence-based and we're not allowed to do anything if it's not evidence-based so actually we need to find innovative ways to be measure the impact of intergenerational work so a bit like Laura was just saying Louisa was just saying that kind of reflective part of it and actually knowing what we're evaluating, making sure that if we are doing intergenerational practice, we're, we're evaluating that really well and we're getting that, we're getting that right. Um, so that's me. Um, if you just want to take down my email, if you don't have it, drop me any messages, but I'm sorry that was a very quick run through. Um, but yeah.